QuickBooks Online 2024 Vertical Analysis Profit and Loss P&L or Income Statement. Get ready and relax because it's so easy using QuickBooks Online, you'd think it'd be a crime. But it's not, unless you're doing bookkeeping for like porch pirates or something. But anyways, let's get into it. Here we are online in our browser searching for QuickBooks Online test drive, looking for the result that has Intuit.com in the URL, Intuit being the owner of QuickBooks, selecting the United States version of the software and verifying that we're not a robot. Opening up the major financial statement reports like we do every time. The reports are on the left-hand side. We're in the favorites. We're going to be right-clicking on that balance sheet. Open link in new tab. Right-click on the profit and loss. Open link in new tab. Let's go to that middle tab that we just opened. Close up the hamburger and change the range. Going back to 2023, 010123 tab, 123123 tab, run it to refresh it. Let's tab to the right where our income statement or profit and loss is. Close the hamburger and once again go back in time. 010123 tab, 123123 tab. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever, because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our Accounting Rocks product line. If you're not crunching cords using Excel, you're doing it wrong. A must-have product, because the fact, as everyone knows, of accounting being one of the highest forms of artistic expression means accountants have a requirement, the obligation, a duty, to share the tools necessary to properly channel the creative muse. And the muse, she rarely speaks more clearly than through the beautiful symmetry of spreadsheets. So get the shirt, because the creative muse, she could use a new pair of shoes. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Run it. It's just like having a time machine, having QuickBooks, just like having a time machine. So note that the income statement is our performance report, as we've discussed in prior presentations, as opposed to the balance sheet. We enter the date range up top, which is actually reflected on the report as opposed to the balance sheet, which is as of a point in time. We still have the range that we do an input on for the balance sheet. And that's because when we drill down on the numbers in the balance sheet, we will have a range type of report and it helps us to do our comparative types of reports. Let's go to the income statement now. And now we're gonna be thinking about a vertical analysis uh, type of report. Quick comparison of the vertical analysis on the income statement versus the balance sheet. If I go back to the balance sheet, we did this in a prior section. If I select the dropdown, you can see there's less information in the dropdown. And all we have down here is the percent of row and percent of columns. If I select the percent of columns on the balance sheet and run that one, we're comparing everything to the bottom line of the balance sheet, which you can say is total liabilities and equity, which is equal to the total assets. So all the assets are being divided by the, uh, I mean, all, all the asset, individual assets like uh, the bank accounts, 2001, are being divided by the bottom line of each section, assets equal liabilities plus equity, divided by 23436.29, and that's giving us our 8.54 about. So then if I go to the income statement, it's a little bit different. If I select the dropdown, you can see we have these different, uh, different more at least options. So we have the percent of rows. That's not going to be too helpful for us with our with this particular report. We're just going to get the 100% because we only have one column there. But if I select the drop down and I undo that one and I say we want the percent of column. So let's select that one. So I'll run that one. So this is not really the traditional vertical analysis that we would think of because this is comparing it to the bottom line of net income. So you can see net income down here is at the 100%. 
So that there might be some uses for that because that's giving us kind of a ratio analysis of each line item, both income and expense compared to the net income. So in other words, if I took my, uh, my income line here of 4736.47 divided by, and I go down divided by the 1676.46, then we're going to get, if I go back on up, hold on a second. Uh, if I go back on up and I move the decimal two places over, we get 282.53%, right? And I could do the same thing for my expenses, any of the line items. And you can tell what's being used as, as, the, as the factor that's going to be involved in all of the ratios because it's going to be 100%. That'll be the line that's 100%. So that's interesting, probably not the report that we look at the most. The other one is the percent of income. So if I can choose the percent of income and that's comparing to everything basically to the income line item right here. This is actually the one that we use most often. You might say, well, why would that be? Why wouldn't it be the bottom line of the report? And the, one of the reasons would be, well, the income is actually what we're trying to do. That's the goal of the business. Revenue generation is what we're trying to do. So what we're going to think about then is look at the total income uh, and then think about all other line items as compared to the total income line item, both income and expenses. So on the income side, that of course makes perfect sense because it's kind of like what you would see over here on the assets, right? We're comparing each individual asset to the total assets to look at the ratio of where our assets are located. That can help us with our comparisons as we benchmark to another company. Same with the, this side of things, right? If we have different types of income in our business, if I was to compare to another landscaping company, I'm trying to benchmark them, trying to mirror them. I can't just look at my dollar amounts and really be able to tie that into what they're doing because they're larger than we are and we're, we're trying to mirror what they're doing. But we can possibly look at the percentage of our income compared to the total to see if we're lining up to the model that we're kind of projecting ourselves to be. So in this case, I have the 4736.47 divided by the total income 10200.77. If I move the decimal two places over, we get the 46.43%. Uh, so we could do that all the way down. And then, of course, all the percentages uh, there would add up to the 100%, right? We've got the, so if we add these up, we have, for example, the 22.06 minus the 0.88 plus the 14.48 plus 22.02 plus 23.06 plus the 4.35 plus, I'm going down to here, the 2.45 plus 0.49 plus, and then we're going here, the 1.08 plus the 8.95 plus 4.94, and that's going to give us our 100%. So that makes sense. But then down below, you might say, well, why would it make sense for the expenses to be divided by the income? And once again, it's kind of because the income is the reason that we have the expenses. The expenses are what we had to expend during the time period in order to reach our goal of revenue generation. So it makes sense then for us to be comparing our expenses, how much we had to expend in order to generate that revenue. So for example, the, the, the cost of goods sold, which is usually a higher ex expense, is usually gonna be the biggest proportion to the revenue if you were a retail store. It's, it's a lot smaller here because this is kind of a, a landscaping business, but if you were a retail store or something like that, you would expect the cost of goods sold to a, be a, a significant part of a ratio compared to the income. And again, you can kind of compare that to another store. If you were a retail store that's trying to mirror a larger retail store, you can't compare total income and cost of goods sold to them because they're gonna be bigger than you are because you're not gonna be benchmarking or trying to emulate someone that's smaller than you are, right? But you can compare the ratio. So if I look at this, it was 405 divided by the 10200.77. That gives us our 3.97. And we can do that, of course, all the way down. We could say, how, how much is our advertising budget compared to our income? Does that line up to the industry standard? How much is our automobile and so on, equipment and, and so on and so forth? So, and then the, and then the net income now, down here is no longer 100% because we're taking the net income and dividing it by the income line. So the only 100% line is gonna be, of course, 
the total income. Now the other option, so that's the main one. That's the one that's that's the key right there that you, that that you're most likely uh, might run as a package of reports. But we can also do the percent of expenses. Now this one doesn't make a whole lot of sense on the on the income side of things because now you're looking at the income compared to the expenses, which is, seems kind of backwards. But on the expense side of things, you can you can think about here's uh, your expenses and think about each uh, line item in the expense compared to the total line item. So you can see the 100% now is at the total expenses. So I can go through all of the expenses and say, well, how much am I spending in comparison to everything that I'm spending? Or how much am I consuming in expenses compared to the total? So the rent, for example, which is often a fairly high one, 900 divided by the total expenses, of 5203.31 and that's going to give us our if i move the decimal two places over 17.3 percent about now we could try to do all those at the same time if i select all of these boom boom and see if i can run that so now you have all three of those and you can run you know percent of expenses percent of the column net income and the percent of income on one report so that's kind of neat however these two, like I say, are far less common than the percent of income. So most likely you're going to want to run, say, the percent of income one, which would look like that. This again, I'm going to say the percent of income, boom. And then I would call this the profit loss. I'll change it to an income statement vertical analysis. Now assist something like that on the title would be a common change. And then also note that you could do this vertical analysis with comparative reports possibly as well, or, or report multiple periods while including the vertical analysis, right? So, so I might say, uh, if I'm giving my reports to somebody, do I want to give them an income statement and the statement which is a vertical analysis, or maybe I give them a very simple uh, income statement that is collapsed income statement that doesn't have all the subtotals and then I give them this income statement which has the percent of income column on it or I can say maybe I also include some comparative reports with this percentage of income if I hit the drop down here I could look at it by quarter for example as we saw in a prior presentation but now it's showing each quarter giving us both the line items and the percent of income for for each of them and it gives us the total for for the entire year and the percentage of income so this report gives you all the information as the total income statement did plus it gives you a breakout on quarter by quarter and the percentage of incomes of each as well as the total so so you got to think about well is how would I group my reports? Maybe you want to give them a simple income statement that is a summer income statement, maybe then an income statement that has has a has a percentage uh, to it, or maybe you give them the bigger report like this that has some comparative information, or possibly you give them all of the reports, right? And you take them along every step along the way. So we run into the same concept of when you're providing the reports to the clients, you have a whole lot of options in terms of what package or bundle of reports that you want to be providing, which will possibly differ on a month by month, quarter by quarter, year by year. You might have different bundles of reports for January than you would for the end of the year, clearly December, and you might have different reports that you might want to focus in on at the end of each quarter versus the end of each month. And in uh, a lot of the thought you might put into that is uh, how do I want to be presenting these comparative type reports? Because the combinations of reports that we can do now that we have these tools of a vertical analysis and a horizontal analysis and multiple periods comparing the current period to the prior period and all that kind of stuff means that you have a whole lot of different uh, combinations, a lot of different combinations. All right. So I've emphasized that enough. Let's go back to the total run it again we would probably want to customize this thing like we normally do so we can customize up top we can say we want to remove the pennies negative numbers bracketed and then show them as red and then on the header and footer we can take out the date the time and the report basis 
and then run it. So now we have it there, income statement, vertical analysis. And so that looks good. And then of course we might wanna save it. We might wanna save the customization, put it into a group of some kind, possibly month and reports, and then add it, boom, and then save it, bam. And then we can go to that first tab over here, go down to the reports on the left-hand side, custom reports, and there it is our vertical analysis that we can generate at month end.